Hello dear children, in a today's class we will be solving the numericals based on refraction of light at a plane surfaces. So children, before going to discuss the numericals, once again let us see what are the important formulas which we are going to use to solve the numericals. So these formulas if you can remember, so easily we can solve the numericals. Ok children, fine, look at it, the first one is refractive index is equal to C by V, that is what actually speed of light in a medium to the speed of the speed of the light in a vacuum to the speed of the light in a medium and one more thing also very important that is what actually mu is equal to sin i by sin r so based on based on the snell's law also we have a numericals and second one is based on the principle of reversibility that is refractive index of first medium with respect to second medium is equal to the reciprocal of refractive index of second medium with respect to first medium where the third one is this is based on the prism actually so angle of incidence is equal to angle of the prism plus minimum angle of deviation by 2 and this formula only can be written like this which means what depends in the data whether they may ask us to calculate the angle of incidence or minimum angle of deviation so next numerical can be expected based on the apparent depth and the real depth so refractive index also defined as the ratio of real depth to the apparent depth and one more important based on that concept only is what actually shift is equal to real depth into 1 minus 1 by mu sometimes in a numerical they may talk about the thickness of the medium children thickness of the medium or so these both are same only okay so first you can just list of these formulas so that we can solve the numericals here we have few numericals in exercise 4a, exercise 4b and even we have some numericals based in uh, exercise 4c also. So almost total 7 to 8 numericals are there. So each and every numerical we will discuss in detail. Just you copy it. So first numerical. So as per the question children, it is given that speed of the light in a vacuum is given that is in air also 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second and the refractive index of the glass is given 1.5 children this can be written as 3 by 2 now they are asking us to calculate the speed of the light in the glass so we have the relation that is refractive index is equal to c by v so children from this it can be written as v is equal to c by mu now let us substitute the values so v is equal to 3 into 10 power h by mu value is how much it is a 3 by 2 so 3 3 gets cancelled so denominator in a denominator will be the numerator so it is v is equal to 2 into 10 power 8 meter per second so this is how we can calculate the speed of the light in a glass okay just copy it so in a second numerical it is given that c value is 3 into 10 power 8 meter per second Whereas speed of the light in a diamond is given 1,25,000 kilometer per second. Children, as it is given kilometer per, per second, let us convert into meters. So this can be written as 125,000. Children, 1 kilometer is equal to 1,000 meters. So this will be 1, 2, 3 meters per second. Now, let us write according to scientific notation, according to the order of magnitude concept, this can be written as 1.25 into 10 power 8 meter per second. So it will be same. Children, value will be same. Okay, fine. Now what we have to calculate? Refractive index value to be calculated. So refractive index is equal to C by V. Now let us substitute 3 into 10 power 8 by 1.25 into 10 power 8. So 10 power 8, 10 power 8 will get cancelled. So refractive index is equal to approximately you will get 2.42. So this is how we can calculate that. <coughs> we can <coughs> we can calculate the refractive index. <coughs> refractive index of the diamond. Just copy. So in a third numerical children, it is given that refractive index of water with respect to air is given. This is how much? 4 by 3 is given. Now they are asking us to calculate the refractive index of air with respect to water. Children, according to the principle of reversibility, so refractive index of air with respect to water can
can be written as a reciprocal of refractive index of water with respect to air. Now you substitute its value. So this will be 1 by 4 by 3. So this can be written as 3 by 4. Children, 3 by 4, how can it can be written? 3 by 4 can be written as, is it clear? Just copy it. So fourth numerical it is given children. So a light is passing from light of wavelength with a 5400 angstrom is passing from So children here is fourth numerical here a light of wavelength 5400 angstroms is passing from air to glass means it's getting refracted from air to glass so when it is in air the refractive index is 5400 angstroms and if the refractiveness of glass with respect to air is what we can say 3 by 2 is given then they are asking us to find the wavelength of the light in glass they are asking wavelength of light in a glass they are asking children just let us think how refractive index and uh, what we can say uh, wavelength are related here inversely proportional to each other so it can be written as refractiveness of glass by refractiveness of air is equal to so here we can write that wavelength of light in air by wavelength of light in a glass now let us substitute here anyhow this mu a value is 1 only only home because the refractiveness of air or vacuum is always equal to 1. So it can be written as it is 3 by 2 is equal to lambda a value is given 5400 angstroms by lambda g. If you can see 3 ones are here, 3 ones are 3 means 1800. Do the cross multiplication, you will get lambda g is equal to 2 into 1800. This will be how much more? 3000. 600 angstroms. So children here we can learn one important point. So during the refraction as we discussed earlier that wavelength can be changed. So when the wavelength means in air wavelength is 5400 angstroms. The moment when it enters into the glass what happened its wavelength is decreased. Why? Refractive index is increased. Okay fine. And children one more important numerical actually it is not covered in the numericals of 4a rather it is covered in the theory questions. Let us discuss that. So according to that actual children, the question you can see on board also. So according to that, it is given that here. So this is how actually light ray is incidenting and is getting refracted. So that it is given 30 degrees and it is given 45 degrees. Let us see that. And it is a liquid. It is a liquid. Now the first question is that what is the angle of incidence? Children, by seeing the diagram actually, many students will come to the conclusion by saying that 30 degrees, but it is wrong. Why? Angle of incidence means the angle between normal and incident ray. This is I. So, I can be written as here 90 minus 30. That is 60 degrees. Okay, now fine. Now, second one. What is the angle of refraction? So, angle of refraction also. So, directly it is given, that is 45 degrees. If here it is given here, what will happen? You have to subtract from 90 minus 45. Again, you will get anyhow 45 degrees only. Okay, for suppose it is given, let us say, here it is given 45 degrees, let us say. So, this will be angle of refraction. Then, how to get it? Then, 90 minus 45, anyhow, you will get 45 degrees only. Now, even they are asking us to calculate the refractive index of the liquid in which light is getting refracted. So let us use the Snell's law children. As per that here, refractive index of liquid with respect to air is equal to sin i by sin r. So this will be connected as a mu l only. Sin i is how much it is a sin 60 degrees by sin r, sin 45 degrees. So sin 60 degrees is equal to how much it is a root 3 by 2. Sin 45 degrees is 1 by root 2. Let us simplify this. So, it will be root 3 by 2 into root 2. So, children, this can be written as root 3 into root 2 by 2 can be written as root 2 into root 2. So, here root 2, root 2 gets cancelled. So, you can leave this is root 3 by 2 or if you can simplify, you will get 1.22. So, this is how 
we can solve the numericals based on what from uh, exercise 4a just to copy this now we'll see the numericals from uh, exercise 4b so in the first question it is given that children angle of incidence is 40 degrees is given and the angle of the prism that is 6 degrees is given they are asking us to calculate the minimum angle of deviation minimum angle of deviation so we have a direct relation children here so minimum angle of deviation is equal to 2i minus a this formula which we have already we discussed beginning of this video only so here it is 2 into 40 degrees minus 60 so this is going to be how much it is a 96 minus 60 so minimum angle of deviation is equal to 36 degrees this is how we can solve now second numerical children if you can see it's like a fun you know because second numerical is quite opposite to the first numerical because in this it is given that minimum angle of deviation is given that is 36 degrees and here one clue is given equilateral prism so equilateral prism angle of the for equilateral prism angle of the prism is 60 degrees now they are asking us to calculate the angle of incidence that's it so here we know that i is equal to a plus delta m by 2 let us substitute the values 60 plus 36 by 2 then this will be 96 by 2 so angle of incidence will be 48 degrees is it clear just copy it so children before going to solve numericals based on the uh, a based on uh, what we can say from uh, exercise 4c one important difference we need to understand what is that here in the numerical small confusion will be there what is that here in some questions it is given appears to be children appears to be means it is apparent depth if it is given appears to be raised appears to be raised appears to be raised raised means it is a shift so this difference we need to understand at any cost okay children fine so let us do the first numerical so as per the question it is given that a pond is there and its depth is appears at appears to be what a 2.7 meters is given appears to be means what apparent depth is given so here appears to be means apparent depth is given how much it is 2.7 meters and the refractive index of water is given that is 4 by 3 they are asking us to calculate actual depth that is the real depth of that pond okay now fine so we have died formally refractive index is equal to real depth by apparent depth from this real depth is equal to children mu into ad so mu is given how much 4 by 3 into 2.7 so 3 ones are 3 0 0.9 are so here 4 into 0 0.9 is how much 3.6 meters is it clear just copy it so let me erase this hope this point is very clear that's good now here in a second question it is given that children so water is taken in a beaker so here refracting of water is given that is 4 by 3 and actually what is the depth of the water it is given that real depth is given that is a 12 centimeters now they are asking us to calculate by what height the coin appears to be raised so appears to be raised means what here shift so here they are asking us to calculate the shift so shift is equal to how much so children here shift is equal to, we have that formula that is real depth into 1 minus 1 by mu so if you can substitute here that is 12 into 1 minus 1 by 4 by 3 so this can be 12 into 1 minus 3 by 4 now let us take a LCM this is going to be 4 minus 3 by 4 this can be 12 into 1 by 4 so this is 3 centimeters so shift is 3 centimeters in the same question they might ask apparent depth how to calculate children we know that here shift is equal to real depth minus apparent depth that's it so shift we got as a 3 real depth is 12 minus apparent depth so here apparent depth is equal to 12 minus 3 this is 9 centimeter children it is not asked us to calculate the apparent depth just i am telling you it might be asked then how to calculate means this is the process
okay chill just copy it now this is the last numerical real depth is equal to how much chill as per the question a post is stamped is placed just below the rectangular glass slab so and when it is viewed vertically from the top what happens this post is stamped appears appears to be raised by 7 mm appears to be raised by means what children shift is given now they are asking us to calculate the thickness of the glass slab children here thickness or real depth both are same only okay fine so here as per the question here we have this information shift is equal to 7 mm and the refractiveness of glass is given it is 3 by 2 they are asking us to calculate the real depth so same formula let us take here that is shift is equal to real depth into 1 minus 1 by mu children this can be written like this also shift is what actually 7 is equal to real depth can be t you can take t or real depth both are same only so that is t into 1 minus 1 by uh, 3 by 2 because it is a glass right it is a 3 by 2 Let us simplify this. Seven is equal to t into one minus two by three. So this can be seven in, is equal to t into three minus two by three. So this is going to be seven is equal to t into one by three. Children, let us do the cross multiplication. Then you will get thickness is equal to seven into three, twenty-one millimeters. Twenty-one millimeters. If you want to convert into centimeters, two point one centimeters. So depends. Whether they are asking in centimeters or it's millimeters, as the data is given millimeters, just we are calculating millimeter. But is it clear? Fine. But in this case, in this numerical chart, they did not ask us upper end depth. So if means they might ask even upper end depth also. So how to calculate? Simple thing. Shift is equal to again same formula. Shift is equal to real depth minus upper end depth. Shift is given how much? Seven. Real depth is how much? Twenty one minus AD. So here upper end depth is equal to 21 minus 7. This is going to be how much? Children? This is going to be how much? 7 is a 14 millimeters. Means from here to here, this will be 14 millimeter. Children, this is not asked in a numerical. So might be asked. So we should be ready. Is it clear? Fine, children. So these are the numericals based on refraction of light at a plane surfaces. Children. Concept is important. Again, I'm telling you, read the textbook. The best source for you to get a command on the subject is a textbook. First, to refer the textbook, and after reading the textbook, what you have to do at the back of the, uh, I mean, the chapter, some example uh, questions are discussed. Might be theory questions or numericals. Practice those questions, and after that, go for exercise questions so that we will get a good command on the content. and we can do we can attempt any kind of question which is given in textbook okay children thank you so much all the very best